Alrighty everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to go over how you can analyze your lifts using some free software that's out there. So it's going to be a physics program that's going to be on this website and it's called Tracker. So you can also Google search it, but I'll put the uh, link in the description below to the website so you can go and download it and then you can follow along what we're doing here today. All right. So once you have it downloaded, the first thing you want to do is import your videos. So you do import video and then you have to go and search for wherever it is. I just happened to already have the videos imported here. One of my lifters, Shannon, sent me these videos yesterday for her weekly update. So we have a squat, a bench press, and a deadlift. So we'll go through them real quick and show you how you can set everything up. Before we set everything up, just to mention kind of what kind of quality you want and the angle that you want for the videos to kind of help with the program. So Obviously the higher quality will be better so that it can recognize the point that it's gonna track and give you good information. And then the angle, I prefer this side view. Um, that way it's easier to get the end of the barbell and you're able to see the bar path for all three lifts, especially for the bench press since you are gonna have some horizontal travel that you do want to see. It's good to get the side view. Um, but we'll show an example too of this deadlift where it's a little bit of an angle where you're not going to get the bar path, but you can still see the velocity and acceleration. Um, but as we'll also show you some examples or some issues that come up with trying to track this. Um, one of it being that you need that clear point, like I said, and so it helps sometimes to have something that's distinct, like here at the end of the cap has the white on it, or you can even put a sticker on the end of the cap or somewhere in your bar that's a different color that will stand out. All right. So once you have your video imported, what you want to do is you want to trim down the video to just the part that you want. So if there's parts of you walking down and setting up, you can get rid of that. And then also for this example, we just want to look at the ascent so we can get rid of the descent. So down here in the bottom, these little black triangles, you can click on them and then you can drag it to get rid of the frames that you don't want. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the setup and the descent and find the bottom of the squat. So that looks pretty good right there. And then I already have the end of the, the ascent already set up just to make this go quicker. So once you have the beginning and the end of the part that you want to analyze set up, then you can always hit this and go back to step zero. And then what we're going to do is come here to this button called create a new track. We're going to create a new point mass. All right, once you click on that, you can see the program is already starting to prepare the table and the graph that where it's going to put all the data. So we're gonna hit on mass A, and we're gonna use the auto tracker. All right, that's why you need a clear point because it's automatically gonna go frame by frame and track that keyframe that you give it. So here in blue, you see to create a new keyframe, we're gonna hit shift, control, and click. So when you hit control and shift, you'll see your cursor change its icon. And in this case, we're gonna try and track this cap. So here you can see it has the template of what it's gonna try and track. And then we're going to hit search and see what happens. So there you go. It went frame by frame and it tracked that perfectly. You can mess around with what you see um, with these buttons here. So if you want to look at kind of a bunch of the points or you want to see all the points, you can see that. If you want to take the frame number away, you can take the frame number away. If you want to change the, the icon, you can take that away. Um, here is the bar path. You can take the bar path away or put it back on. So this way, we just want to look at bar path right now. So I turn the rest of them off so you can see the bar path. And then you can watch the video play and go through that bar path. And you can see um, very vertical, a little bit of forward movement, a little bit of back, and then boom, lockout. All right. Then you can see once you close this, here is your graph and your tables. And you can change this axis to what you want. So if you want to look at the horizontal position, you want to look at the vertical position, you want to look at the vertical velocity, you want to look at the vertical acceleration. So let's look at the vertical acceleration and there you go. So you can say, okay, well, where's my acceleration the lowest? So we can come over here and we can click on this point and it'll take you to that frame. And you can see that it's, in this case, it's basically the lockout because um, obviously we are going to slow down as we're getting to lockout and finishing the lift. Um, so one thing you can do is you can remove these frames that you don't want to look at just because it's kind of making our graph look a little bit um, 
very condensed here in this area that we wanted to see. So what we can do is again, come here, trim these frames out. And then now we trim those frames out. Now we can get a clearer picture of the actual um, range of motion that we wanna look at. So now let's hit on this point. So now we can see this is our lowest vertical acceleration in the range of motion that we actually wanna look at and improve. All right. But like I said in a previous blog post, um, you don't wanna look at it as a weak point or a failure point. So we don't wanna just look at this one point and be like, okay, this is where we're weakest, this is where we have to look, at, look to improve. We wanna look at a range of motion, a portion of the lift where we are weak at and how can we improve that portion. So let's go and let's look at this entire section here because you can see there's a low point here, try and get a little bit faster, but then again, we get slow again, try and get a little bit faster, then we get slow again. So what is this point here? So we click on this one and we can see that it's just coming out of the hole. So here's the bottom and then here's just coming out of the hole. Once you kind of got that little bounce out of the hole, you start slowing down and then slowing down to about this point here, which is about halfway up where the hips are about as far as possible from the uh, center line. And then you can see then we speed up into lockout. So what we can do is then say, okay, our weak range of motion is from just out of the hole to about halfway. So now how can we go and improve that? So then you can go look and see, okay, what kind of technical improvements can I make in that place, uh, in that range of motion? What kind of variations can I use to emphasize that, like paw squats or pin squats? Um, and then as a last thing, you may want to also throw in there is kind of what kind of muscle groups can I improve? So you may want to improve whatever here, maybe you want to improve your glute strength. So then you put in accessory work to help build up the glutes. So that's a way that you can look at the squat. And you can do the same thing for the, the bench and the deadlift. So uh, I already have this trimmed down. You do the create mass, point mass, auto tracker. We'll pick this end point. We'll do search. And there you go, got the bench done. There is your bar path and you can analyze your bar path. And then you come over here and look at the acceleration in the vertical direction. And again, in this case, you can see that we're getting very low points because I have the lockout included in there and some frames past when the lift is complete. So I can take those out. That's, there we go. And now we should be able to get a clearer picture of the movement. You can actually play, press play and watch it go through that as well. So then you can kind of see that it starts slow and it speeds up into lockout. So we can come and see again, where is this slow? So right off the chest, then let's look at this point. Again, maybe a couple inches off the chest and then there and there up to maybe about halfway you can see on your bar path and you can uh, zoom in you can zoom in and see a better thing. So about right off the chest, once the leg drive is done to about halfway. So again, we can then go and say, okay, what kind of technical improvements can we make? Can we be tighter? Can we drive the legs more? Can we have a softer uh, touch if we want that? Can we rest it more in the chest if we want that? Um, and then you can also look at the variations. So you can do uh, pin press, uh, one board, half board, uh, long pauses, that kind of stuff and then maybe what kind of muscles can you also build up. So maybe you wanna build up your pecs more and then you got your analyzation done for bench press. So we're gonna go into deadlift and that's kind of where you see some issues here. One, like I said, you can't see your bar path because you're not tracking from the side. And two, we don't have that distinct point to track. So now when we come and track it, do auto tracker, we have to pick something. So for example, if you picked the center of the bar here, and said, let's see how it does with that. So we try it out and you can see it wobbling kind of side to side on the bar since it's all basically one shade of gray. And then you can see it kind of like loses it. So it was going side to side in that center uh, smooth part and then it loses it and goes into the knurling. So this is not gonna give us accurate data. So what we can do is here hit delete, clear all points and then try a different point. Let's try this end of the bar and try that out. So you might have to try out a couple of different spots to see which one works. Um, if it doesn't, then like I said, you might need to find something more distinct, the end of the bar, or maybe put a sticker on this smooth part that's red or green or white or something that will stand out. Um, but you can see here, it tracked that end well. 
then you can go and you can um, look at it. So let's look at the acceleration in the Y. And there you go. So you can see again, it slows up basically at lockout. So she kind of gets stuck on her thighs and trying to get the shoulders back a little bit slow. But let's look at some of these other points. So here, slow off the ground, which is typical for sumo. Here, still on the ground. Here, still on the ground. So you can see um, very difficult to break the bar off the ground and then start speeding up as the bar does break off the ground, which is typical for sumo. And it kind of speeds up towards the lockout. And in this case, we do slow up getting into lockout. So in this case, we might want to see well, what can we do to improve from the need lockout? Maybe we can change the stance width, we can change the grip width, maybe we can focus again on building up the glutes, all that kind of stuff to try and improve it. But for this video, we're just kind of going over how you can set up the videos in this program and then be able to track a point so that you can look at your acceleration and your bar path. Some of the other things that you can look at as well is you can set your axis. So here you can set up your axis to be able to get more accurate readings of how far forward you're going or how far back are you going. So now that we set our axis um, as close to the center of the bar as we can, you can see how far forward you're going, how far back you're going. And if you want to see a amount, then you want to calibrate your video so that this scale is correct. So what you can do is here on this blue icon, you can do new calibration stick and you can, for example, uh, calibrate to this bar or to this plate, excuse me. So now it knows the scale of the video based on that plate and then you're gonna get more accurate readings on how far forward you're going and how far back you're going. And then here you can see those measurements and the timestamp and everything. So those are some additional things that you can do to kind of get an idea of some additional analysis beyond just acceleration or just the bar path. You can look at physical numbers and see how far forward or back you're going, seeing if it's worth improving or it's very insignificant amount. I know there's a lot of stuff in this video I'm going over how to set it up and how to look at it and different analyzations you can do. Um, but one thing you can do is kind of, like I said, download the program, go step by step as I'm doing it with the video. And then at the end also kind of reflect on everything and pick one thing. What's the most useful thing to you out of all the things I said? Is the bar path more important? Is the acceleration and figuring out your weak range of motion more important? Um, do you want to see exactly how far forward you're going or how far backwards you're going uh, of the center line? So figure out what's most useful to you and your specific situation for the video you're using and then figure out, well, how can I apply this? So if we're looking at the, for example, the acceleration and you found out your weak range of motion, okay, now how can I apply this to my programming? So like I said, step one, how can you improve your technique in that range of motion or previous, like your walkout, your setup, your bracing, your descent. Two, what kind of um, assistance exercises am I doing right now and are they helping improve that area or are they not helping and maybe I need to switch it? So like I said, maybe you can do pause squats or pin squats if you have issues with, with the bottom position. And then three, you may get some benefit also from specific accessory work um, for muscle groups that you're trying to hit to improve that. So. If you think you have weak glutes and then you are weakest in your squat when your hips are farthest from the center line, then maybe that kind of affirms that hypothesis. And so then maybe you put in some exercises to strengthen your glutes. So maybe you do a leg press or hip thrust or Bulgarian split squats or whatever, good mornings, whatever you think that will benefit you um, for that muscle group. All right, so hopefully that helps you out. If you have any questions or you have any issues with your video in the program, they can always leave it in the comments below, or you can always email me. That way you can send me your actual video or your tracker file, and I can take a look at it and see what the issue is um, and why it's not working properly. All right, see you.